Hello everybody, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and now is time for the video that can't be avoided. The time comes in everyone's aspiring programming career to edit a text file. And you have to learn to crawl before you can walk. But if you've ever watched a baby learn to crawl and eventually walk, you see there's a lot really involved a lot of skills that are developed. And happily, the rules governing your legs and your body aren't changed on you except through gradual growth throughout your life. Not so with the simple task of editing text files. If you use tools like Xcode or Visual Studio, the rules are changed on you and there is a relearning that you have to go through and a certain reliance on the decisions of businesses and the businesses guide you along an upgrade path and extract new licensing money out of you or at very least keep you on their platform from their perspective hopefully for the rest of your life it doesn't have to be that way and a lot of people use third-party text editors like sublime uh, I'm here to tell you that there are two editors out there that are as old as the internet itself at very least, uh, nearly as old as computers, and they are Vim and Emacs. Technically it's a VI that goes way back with a, a history even longer than, than VI. It was a single line editor, but that's a whole history that I'll try and cover later. The modern implementation of VI is called Vim. It's clearly the uh, successor, the heir apparent to VI, and it's part of the Unix standard. At least VI is, but you want to use the more powerful version called Vim. The upside being it's always there. And if it's not there, it's a tiny install away that's easy to do and is going to be available on every Unix or Linux-like system you'll ever work on. And it doesn't have to be highly configured to use. Okay, that's the necessary evil by way of explanation. I advocate that you use Vim. And I installed it on Arch Linux on the Raspberry Pi yesterday. And today we're gonna use it, and this is your introduction. I am going to make my terminal into a much more standard size, 80 columns by 24. You don't have to. This is just to make VI look, or Vim look how it historically looks. And then I will uh, increase the size so that you can actually read what's going on. And now I am going to SSH as root to Mike. 11seo.com and everything I'm doing right now is in my home directory. The default of logging in through Arch is to drop you into the home directory of root. If you wanted to see that, you can type pwd, which you would think means password, but it really is what is my current directory. And slash root is actually the uh, slash refers to the root user and then root refers to the home directory of the root user which is also named root. The command ls will show you what's in there only those things that we are familiar with from the installs yesterday and the text editor is called vim so what you do is you type vim space and then the name of the file you want to edit in this case index.html now I'm just going to type ind then hit the tab key for command line completion. Here we are inside of Vim as it's installed under Arch Linux with Pac-Man Remote Package Manager by default. It's not very pretty and later on I'll probably add color coding and stuff but we're here to change a headline. So if you look back at the website I launched yesterday the word is skeleton and it's probably between some HTML tags and you can highlight it and you can say inspect element when you're in Google Chrome and it will show you yes indeed there's an H1 and uh, it's inside of there so 
when we go back here, we are going to search. And when you're in Vim, it's not a what you see is what you get editor. It's not a WYSIWYG editor. It comes from before those days and its whole way of working has been shaped by what were the realities of the day in 1960s and 1970s, which is very low bandwidth and usually not having graphics. So you were very conservative in terms of the keystrokes that you needed to do to get stuff done just like the concerns that went into the Unix operating system itself, why you get short commands like ls and cd. So I'm going to hit slash on my keyboard, which puts me into search mode. And then I'm going to put back arrow h1, enter. That jumps me right to where that line is. And now I can do backslash again and type skeleton and it jumps me right to that word. Now, I can't just start typing and changing it like most other text editors. I'm gonna type D for delete and W for word. I just deleted the word. And then I type I to go into insert mode. And then I type, welcome to mike11seo.com. Now that I'm in insert mode, I introduce you to the most common key in VI and VIM, which is the bane of a lot of people's existence, but you get used to it, and if you really hate it, you can remap it to other keys. You hit the escape key to get you out of insert mode. And then to save it, there are a number of ways to save it, but you go into command mode, which is begun by typing colon. So the shift semicolon gives you the colon, right? We're going to do uh, W for write, and then I'll hit return. And then I'm going to do a colon and Q for quit. Although I don't even really need to quit yet. I'm not hitting enter yet. I'm switching over here to see if changing it on the hard drive changes it in Pygreen. So I'm going to go here and do a refresh. Yay, welcome to Mike Levin SEO. At least people coming here as a result of my videos will see the correct name of the site instead of just the word skeleton. I'll have a lot more text editing to do to get this to be something a little more presentable, but now I can do my colon Q for quit and there. That's your introduction to Vim, which is very similar to VI, which is the text editor that, that's always there. And even though it looks a little bit unusual and cryptic, it will serve you well for very likely the rest of your life. Learn Vim and no vendor will be able to pull the carpet out from under you and you will be the master of text files, which is so, so important on your rise to becoming a technical superpower. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon, and please don't forget to do that subscribe.